The first new civilization that we'll study in class will be the Byzantine Empire. However, it's virtually impossible to understand the Byzantines without first understanding their predecessors, the Romans. In this video, I'm going to do my best to give you a five minute crash course on Roman history. If you're interested in learning more, fear not. I have a whole freaking playlist that dives deeper into these topics on Roman civilization. According to legend, the city of Rome was founded on the river Tiber on the Italian peninsula in the year 753 BCE by two brothers raised by a she-wolf, Romulus and Remus. The two brothers would have a civil war with one another, and since we call the city Rome, not Reem, it's safe to assume that Romulus won. In truth, Rome was located on a great strategic location. Its location on the Italian peninsula provided it access to Mediterranean Sea trade routes. The sea and the Alps mountains to the north provided protection from invasion, and the fertile land surrounding the city could feed and support a large population. The Romans also benefit benefited from interactions with Greek colonists, from whom they picked up their alphabetic system of writing, as well as their plethora of gods and goddesses that made up their religion. For its first 150 years or so, Rome was ruled as a small city-state with a king. However, the Romans grew tired of having a king, and in the year 609 BCE, they developed a new system of government, an indirect representative democracy known as the Roman Republic. This system of government featured elected leaders and a separation of powers among multiple branches of government, including the assemblies, the senate, and the consuls. Sound familiar? While Roman civilization did not expand much beyond the Italian peninsula for its first 500-ish years, things changed when they began to butt heads in trade disputes with their neighboring African city-state, Carthage. Following three wars over the span of 80 years, including a 17-year stretch where Hannibal Barca and his army of elephants conquered the Italian peninsula, Rome finally vanquished Carthage in the Punic Wars. This left Rome as the sole superpower of the Mediterranean world, and enabled them to expand and conquer the entire Mediterranean basin, including the lands of Africa, Asia, and the Hellenistic empires of Europe over the next few hundred years. However, expansion wasn't all sunshine and roses for the Romans, as it led to growing economic inequality, slavery, and increased power of military generals over elected representatives of the people. The Romans would end up fighting 12 civil wars over the span of 100 years, ultimately leaving Julius Caesar to grab the power in the year 50 BCE. After Caesar was named first citizen and dictator for life in 44 BCE, the Roman Senate had him assassinated by stabbing him 23 times on the Senate floor because, you know, kings are bad. In the power vacuum that ensued, Caesar's grandnephew and, and adopted son Octavian would seize power and rule as the first emperor of Rome, being renamed Augustus. The Romans would do away with their representative democracy in favor of an imperial monarchy, and it wouldn't show up again in history for another 1800 years until the US of freaking A decided to give it a try. While switching to an imperial monarchy might sound like, an, like a terrible idea, things actually weren't so bad under the Roman Empire for the first 200 years or so. Cities like Rome, Alexandria, Corinth, Paris, and Bonn thrived as centers of art, architecture, and literacy. An excellent system of roads and uniform currency ensured a safe and steady flow of trade and prosperity throughout the empire and a competent civil service and uniform rule of law helped ensure political stability, even in the spite of a few crazy emperors, some of whom would go on to name their own horse as consul. The Romans also thrived in the realm of architecture, building well-known massive structures such as the Colosseum and the Pantheon, as well as important technological innovations like their extensive road system or the aqueducts that could carry water to a city from a mountain over 50 miles away. It was also around this time in history that Christianity began to emerge. Originating in the land of Judea, it followed the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, who preached monotheism, the Ten Commandments, and an emphasis on charity. Christianity would spend its first 200 years, years or so as a niche religion in the Roman Empire. But in the year 313 CE, 
the Emperor Constantine would change that, issuing the Edict of Milan, and it would eventually become the official religion of the Roman Empire. Constantine made one other huge change during his time as emperor. He moved the capital from Rome to the new city of Byzantium. A few more decades of internal conflict later, and the Roman Empire would split in half. The Latin-speaking Western Roman Empire, with its capital in Rome, and the Greek-speaking Eastern Roman Empire, with its capital in Byzantium, which was then renamed Constantinople. However, this is spent essentially spelled doom for the western half of the empire, as it was significantly poorer and faced more military threats than the east. By the year 476, following many invasions from outside horse forces, the western empire collapsed, leaving behind a fractured land of Germanic kingdoms. The Eastern Empire, however, would live on as the Byzantine Empire. Whew, looks like I got that in six minutes. Thank you, guys.